this morning for getting up, coming out. I thank him for watching over me last night while I slumbered and slept under no power of my own. Father, we thank you this morning for let us come out to the house of the Lord one more time. Father God, we just love you. We love you. And I know you love us because you kept us here for a long time. So, Everyone know the word of prayer. Pray for our country. We need, we need prayer. God said, if you ask, he will give. He said, you don't have to beg, just ask. So we all ask for what we want. And God will give us what we need. Amen. Is there anyone with a testimony this morning about the goodness of the Lord? I know he's good. I'm looking at you. I know you hear your presence in this house. Amen. So I know you got a word for the Lord this morning. I'll be right back. Say so good morning. I'm Lonnie. Yeah, and I'm just grateful to be alive. I want to thank God for another day. You know, without him, I don't know where I would be. I've been coming here a while, and I've gotten so much better spiritually. Yes. I love this place. I love you all, you know. <laughs> and sadly, I'll be leaving. This is my last Sunday, but I just had to be here, <laughs> you know. Cause, and I'm going to find a way, because the lady told me, told me that um, when I'm moving to Charlotte and there's going to be members down there that I could um, commune with. Thank you. Man, here's my sister. Look at God. Hi. Good morning, my sister. <laughs> Good morning, St. Luke. Good morning. My name is Naomi Shine. I was here since 1940. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, uh, well, I got a little older now, but I came yes. when I was young. But now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his children begging for bread. This morning, I'm glad to be in the number one more time. And I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall be standing within the gates all Jerusalem. I'm so glad to be back home. If you never see me Praise anymore, the, the old lady is sick now. She's 96. Praise the Lord. And God. And yes. I'm glad to be in the number. Yes. Don't know me, know that, know me. But those that don't be know me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and those that don't know me, you hear me. Amen. All right. Woo. So I'm glad to be in the 
you live and because he lives anyone else I know sister Lily wanted to testify good morning St. Luke I'm here again I know you all have on Sunday morning to see me coming up but I just like I said God knows my heart and God knows where he has brought me from and I know you tired of it, but St. Luke I just want you to know I was brought up in St. Luke. When I, was brought up, when I came to New York, I was looking for a church home. And at the time, my brother was in this church home. And at that time, I only was coming because I used to like the young kids sing, and all oh, Lord didn't sing so good. And then after that, I started getting involved in the Bible. We used to have Bible study every Saturday. And then the word said, that's when I really know what it was all about. Because before that, my bigger brother gave me a Bible. And the only thing I needed to do with that Bible, I needed to keep it nice and dusty and things. But the thing that I never did was open it. But I kept the outside nice and clean. Oh, wow. But then when I started hanging with certain people on Saturdays, I hanging with them because I wanted to learn what they were learning. And I found that what they were learning it was Bible study. <laughs> and that's what we used to do on Saturday morning. And after I got in the Word, I didn't know all the good things that was in that Bible. From knowing how many books, how many gospels, how many uh, disciples, and all the good things that Jesus has done for us. Mm -hmm. You heard what I just said? All the good things that Jesus has done for us. But then, listen. When you get sick and things, the, who you call on? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is still healing us and things. And most of all, let us all love one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, I said love. I'm not talking about that love love. That's a copy of love. Because right. you're going to need someone one day or another. And I just thank you all for being in my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the testimony about the goodness of the Lord. And pastor's ready to go. God is good. Go ahead. God is a good God. He's a great God. He can do anything but fail. He has moved. So many mountains, oh, thank you, Lord, out of my way, oh, God, is a wonderful God. I'm telling you that God is a good God, he's a great God, he's a great God, he can do. God can do anything, anything but fail. Oh, he has. God has moved up. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God is a wonderful God. Oh, God is a good God. He can do everything but fail. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it as we stand to receive the choir this morning. Amen. Rise among us, let it rise. 
Praise the Lord, church. Again, praise the Lord, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. will now lead us into our call to worship. Immediately following, we will have our morning hymn, How to Reach the Masses, Hymn 221, and then it be led into prayer by Sister Bra Braille Martin. Good morning, church. Good morning. Join me in the call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done all the things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praises. Hymn number 221, How to Reach the Masses. How to reach the masses, those of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. That if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up by living as a Christian ought. 
till I am I will see you all creatures praising him I lift the Savior up let us sing with uplifted voices this morning hymn 221 how to reach the masses those of every birth for an
Good morning, church. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house one more time, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up on this beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, we ask that you bless the people who are not here today, who are traveling, who are sick, and who are alone. Lord, we ask that you bless the people who are here and who could make it today, who got out of bed to worship in your name, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you bless our First Lady Reverend Orsella Hughes and her family, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, church. Uh, this morning scripture is from Psalms 14, and it reads, the fool, or I'm reading the New International Version. So the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupted, their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see there is to see, there, to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour, my, they devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord, but there they are overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of, of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation of Israel would come out, to, come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. This is the blessed word of God for the people of God. Amen. Good morning, church. The leaders of the St. Luke Liturgical Dance Ministry will be ministering from John 16, verse 30 through 33, and it reads, Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied? A time is coming, and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The word of God for the people of God. We will be ministering to My World Needs You by Kirk Franklin. Shh. 
Show me your face Fill up this space My world needs you right now My world needs you right now I can't escape Being afraid Fill me with you We want to praise God and thank the leaders of our dance ministry this morning for ministering the way. Let us praise God once more for them. Show me your face. And I tell you, my family and friends got me real good this morning, y'all. I am not together at this moment and and 
and I'm just so filled and I'm so grateful. I mean, I knew about some people that were coming, but my aunt and uncle, they got me so messed up right now. And I'm gonna ask them to stand. This is my uncle Timothy and my aunt Regina. This is my father's brother and his wife, my aunt and uncle, and Uncle Timmy is a pastor in the Seventh Episcopal District, otherwise known as the great state of South Carolina. <laughs> and y'all are at home, because South Carolina is in this house, amen. <laughs> But they got me so good because Uncle Timothy and I have been on this journey together, ordained the same years, both deacon and elder orders. And so I know he left his church this morning and I did not know, I was trying to guess daddy all week, who could these special people be? And I did not think that my uncle pastor would be here today. So I thank you, thank you. And then I have another set of family and friends, but like family. My Willa, my Annie, Mother Denise, my sister Keisha, please stand this morning. I grew up in Bethel, New Haven. And the three on the end were my YPD directors, church school teachers. <laughs> and then that great sea of people that I call family, but they were my work family. The Howard Cahill Funeral Services, they came in as well. Please stand. So I am filled this morning. I am full this morning and I thank God. Oh, daddy, I'm sorry. My dad is here too. <laughs> and only because he looks so good this morning. My husband, can he stand? All right. <laughs> Wow, thank, thank you for indulging me with that moment this morning. I just, I'm so full and I'm so grateful uh, for each and every one of you. But today is about I Love St. Luke, amen? And we are excited about showing off why we love our church so much and we love God for loving us so much and allowing God, for God allowing us to be stewards and, and trustees and workers of this part of his vineyard, amen? amen? Amen. We only have just a few announcements that we want to bring to your attention uh, because today is so packed with so many other wonderful things today. Uh, you probably saw in an email about a number of upcoming meetings. Um, scratch some of those times and those dates because they were uh, wrong. And so we'll make sure that the updated version is definitely meeting um, after uh, the, the updated dates and times will be provided in this week's um, newsletter. Amen. 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 So we're not going to take a lot of time about from announcements this morning, but we certainly want to thank the um, I Love St. Luke Committee. That's under Sister Shaquan and Sister Kendra for your outstanding leadership. The block party was an absolute success yesterday. And to the South Carolina Ministry, 
thank you for those plates that Howard and I enjoyed later on the evening. I haven't had red rice in so long, and I was like, oh, this red rice is taking me back to my grandmama's kitchen table, and I want to thank y'all so much. I didn't even eat the fish. The red rice was just so good. I thank you so much for your love um, for the South Carolina ministry, but for every ministry that um, participated yesterday, the, the missionaries continue to give out their clothing, and so we want to thank you all so much for all that you do um, in the community outreach without, with, with with giving away our mask that we now see we need again, amen? As COVID numbers are spiking once again, I am praying that we are more diligent and more conscious about when we are in large gatherings and making sure that we are washing our hands and sanitizing often, amen? Amen? Amen, amen. Um, and so those are the only announcements that we have for today. And if anything is updated, we will make sure it is put in the newsletter this week. We also want to uh, let everyone know about Sister um, Mary Palmer, her nephew's son, uh, Brother Eric Phillips. The funeral will take place this Wednesday here at St. Luke. The calling hour is 3 to 4 o'clock with the service at 4 o'clock. And then we also want to keep Sister Tanika Johnson in, her, in our prayers um, as she is funeralizing her mother, Sister uh, Dor uh, excuse me, Dorsey. Will take, and that service will also take place where the wake is Tuesday evening and the funeral is Thursday, excuse me, is Wednesday morning and everything will take place at the Banta Funeral Home. Amen? Amen. Th those notices have gone out and we will make sure they go out again so that you can have it closer to your memory. Amen. At this time, we will now uh, continue in worship as we worship through our uh, music. Amen. The choir will bless us one more time. I'm telling my family, mess me up. Here we go. Let us there. And there is a worship leader. Why am I doing his job? Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you, they have me all messed up. And, and he's sitting here like, <laughs> ready to get up. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Can we give God a little more glory than that? Come on. Give him glory in the house. Come on. I need you to minister to your neighbor for just a few seconds. Can you look at your neighbor either to the left or to the right? Just say, neighbor, today is the first day of the best day of your life. Okay, that might be the wrong neighbor. Look at your other neighbor. Look at him and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, after all you've been through, the best, the best is yet to come.
Don't you leave nothing out. Everything. Not a few things, but everything. At this time, at this, at this time, we're going to call up for Brother Paul to welcome the international guests at this time. Voilà, mettez-vous debout s'il vous plaît, tous nos visiteurs, c'est votre tour maintenant, acclamons le Seigneur, acclamons tous le Seigneur. Voilà, voilà. L'Église Saint-Luc vous souhaite le bienvenu. Sans oublier le pasteur qui est derrière moi et toute la communauté que vous voyez devant vous vous souhaite les bienvenus, acclamons le Seigneur, s'il vous plaît. Bien, mettez-vous assis. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I praise God. I'm going to learn what Brother Paul is saying one of these days. But to our international guests who worship with us weekly, you are welcome here at St. Luke. Amen? Amen. Well, it is good to praise God with our hands and our voice and our feet. Amen? But we also praise God with our offering. Amen? Don't you get quiet on me now, because I said we praise God with our offering. And we praise God for God being so good to us because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to make it so that we could be a blessing to the ministry of the church. And as I tell people all the time, there's the hallelujah side of the church and there's also the business side of the church, amen? And we have to honor God by honoring him through our operations and our ministry, amen? I'll say hello to the light bulbs because I know you can't be on unless we pay that Con Ed bill. Amen. I'll say amen to the air conditioning because I know you can't be on unless we pay the HVAC bill. Amen. And I say amen to each and every one of you because I see miracles every time I look at you and knowing that God makes all things good. Amen. Amen. This morning we are reminding all of our members of St. Luke that today is our I Love St. Luke offering, which is a sacrificial offering of $250. Now to all of our guests, if you want to join us in loving St. Luke with a sacrificial offering of $250, we love you too. Amen. Amen, light bulbs, they don't hear me this morning. Amen, air conditioning, they don't hear me this morning. Amen, miracles, they're not hearing me this morning. Amen. 
And so we will be led by our ushers as we will stand across the sanctuary and we prepare to bring our gifts to the Lord. We make giving so easy here. You can give through our app, the St. Luke app. You can also give online. You can text the word give to 833-921-6297. Or if you like to still write a check, you can bring it to the front of the church this morning or mail it later on this week. Our choir is going, and our music team, amen, who has been blessing us already, is going to lead us in music, give, give us provide us with giving music amen as we bring our gifts to the Lord amen
anthem of thee, O Lord. by another selection from the I Love St. Luke Day Choir. And after that, the next preaching voice we'll, we'll hear is that our pastor, Reverend Arcella Hughes. So before the choir come, you don't see this in program, and she thought that she could leave it off, but I'm going to do this right, and even though she's our own, I'm going to present her. So after the choir come, uh, we can hear from our new leader. So as you know, in our 99th year, St. Luke made history this year, right? So this is our Kamala Harris. <laughs> and I was joking this morning with our first gentleman. I said, he's our Obama. So they got new nicknames by your I Love St. Luke Day chairperson 2024, Kamala and Obama. Um, but for those of you who know, a couple of weeks ago, she's already been presented and introduced. But I thought it not robbery to talk about because there's definitely a preacher in the house. And she is someone special. And some of you know the story and some of you don't. So I want to enlighten you. So this year when the I Love St. Luke Day Committee was formed, we wanted to do something different. And when we was talking to Reverend Green at the time, we said we wanted to feel like home again. And that's where the homecoming um, theme came to be about. And one of the things we wanted to do different, we said, Reverend Green, we hear you preach every I Love St. Luke day. And so we wanted to bring some folks in to preach. And he said, okay, get me some names and I'll see what I can do. So I said, I'm going to give you six names. You have three options for the first one that's come, the second one that was coming up in July. And you have three options for our September one. Lo and behold, God was working in the midst behind the scenes before we even knew. So in no particular order, I submitted to him six names. The joke is that the first name was Arcella Hughes. <laughs> and at that time, we did not know that God was cooking up something because not only was she going to be our speaker, but she became our pastor, y'all. <laughs> so I want to present to some and introduce to the rest of y'all the ninth pastor, history in the making, the first woman pastor in the 99 years of St. Luke AME Church, Arcella Hughes. She has a pastor's heart, y'all. She is somebody. And we are so grateful for you. We thank you for your heart, your love. You hit the floor rolling. She ordered t-shirts, y'all, before some of y'all members did. Pastor, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for just shaking it up because we sure need it. And the best is definitely yet to come under your leadership.
into this building. You brought your burdens. You brought your pain. But I have a message for you today. That when you leave,
the outcome will look like. Oh, you don't know what somebody's been going through. But when you know God as a healer, when you know God as a deliverer, when you know God as a way maker, when you know God as a problem solver, when you know God as the head of your life, when you know that God will never fail, oh, you can't help but give God praise. Sister Rhonda, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Choir. I know what she did. I'm telling y'all going to sleep real good tonight because you put it all out there today. From the depths of your stomachs, you sang today, to God be the glory. But to the songbird I really heard today, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. I didn't know y'all. Marcus. Thank you for letting the Lord use you today. Thank you. Y'all done made preaching extremely hard today. I felt like just saying, let's sing the benediction. because y'all don't have church, amen? Amen. She knows now, but at the conclusion of me preaching and for the song of invitation, I have asked my good friend, Sister Stephanie, who can show enough sing as well, amen, to sing a song, and she's looking at me, shaking her head. All she wanted to do was come to worship, but you gonna sing too, sis, amen. Amen. And so it is nothing against what the choir has done, but that's one of my good, good girlfriends who can show enough sing. And Stephanie, it's, it's not at a funeral today. Amen? Amen. So you're going to sing in front of a whole bunch of us and praise the Lord through the living. Amen. But I, I must admit, I am just full from the experience and the encounter of God this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, I give myself away so that you can use me. My life is not my own. To you, God, I belong and I give myself away. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are my strength, my hope, my rock, and my redeemer. 
in Jesus name I ask this prayer amen also want to make sure that we um, honor the worship participants this morning we want to thank our worship leader and certainly our prayer and our sister who read the scripture we thank God and for all those who participated in this worship the scripture this morning for our thoughts as we preach together, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. You may read along on the screen or with your Bibles or on your mobile devices. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. You'll find these words for your hearing. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom, to another, a message of knowledge, by means of the same spirit, to another faith, by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. God's word for God's people and it can be trusted. For a few moments this morning together, let us focus on these words. I love my church. I love my church. In my opinion... The biggest population that gets the worst rap are church folks. We have turned it into a negative description of people who have meant so much to our lives and our communities. You know what I'm talking about when you hear someone say, church folks. We don't ever think of it as a positive connotation. We immediately want to go to the negative. But as far back as I can remember, church folks have been nothing but a blessing. Here are these stories as I share them when I think about church folks and how they have blessed me. I grew up in a time where we did not go to camp in the summertime. I lived in New Haven, Connecticut, Hamden, Connecticut. And at the last day of school, the car was already packed for us to head to Hemingway, South Carolina for the summer. That was our camp. Our camp didn't involve arts and crafts. Our camp did not involve field trips, unless you call going out to the watermelon patch to get a watermelon and bring it back inside of the house as a field trip. We would stay at grandma's camp, if you wanna call it that, every summer from the day after the last day of school until probably the first three days before the first day of school. Our parents got rid of us purposely so that we could go to grandma's camp. And every day while we were in grandma's camp, we would make sure that we did everything that grandma had asked us to do. We didn't sleep in all morning long. <laughs> We didn't have devices and Nintendos and Ataris and Playstations and cell phones. No, when we woke up, we were washing the baseboards of the house. We were sweeping in the kitchen and there weren't options of cereal all over the house. We didn't have uh, Fruit Loops and Lucky Charms and Captain Crunch. No, you had a big box of cornflakes. The big box of cornflakes didn't have a cute little tiger on it, didn't have a Tucson, it was just a big old rooster to let you know 
that it was just cornflakes. There was nothing fancy about, I don't even think it was Kellogg's, y'all. I just think that it was cornflakes. It didn't come with sugar, so we would have to pour on piles of sugar to try to make it taste. So I think I'm talking to some people that ate some cornflakes growing up. And there wasn't any fancy juice. It was just some Sunny D that was in the refrigerator, and that was usually sold uh, two for one dollars at the food lion up the street. This was camp for us. We are our cousins. We all lived on the same street called Cooper's Avenue. And the first one that got up would come and ring on grandma's doorbell because that's where me and my siblings stayed. And as they would wake us up, the moment you left the house, you didn't come back in the house until it was time to come back in the house. Why? Because you don't be opening grandma's door, opening and closing, opening and closing, letting all of her good air go out, amen? You, you stayed outside until it was time to come in. You, you drank from the water hose, you went to the bathroom outside, or you did not come back into the house until it was time to eat. But after camp all week long, what I really enjoyed the most was Sunday morning. Being able to go to either Chavis AME Church or Jerusalem AME Church. Depending on which grandmother and grandfather I was staying with, those were the two churches. And every morning we'd wake up, we didn't do anything without prayer. We would get up and my grandmothers, they would get on their knees in the living room and we would pray the Lord's Prayer together. And then before you know it, uh, grandma had already had the grits and the sausage and all of that done. We already had, so when we said amen, it was just time to sit at the table and eat. And as soon as we ate and we got dressed, we would hear the horn outside. Somebody was coming to pick us up for church school. Somebody from the church was on already outside, ready to pick us up and bring us to church school. Church folk. That's who I'm talking about, church folk who would not let anybody not have the word church folk, who knew how to pick you up if somebody else could not bring you to church. Church folk. So why do we take a term like church folk and only want to talk about it in a negative sense when church folk are some good folk? Church folk know how to pray. Church folk know how to praise. And church folk know how to bring us together. As a matter of fact, while I was sitting in my office this morning, a church folk brought a big piece of pound cake to me right before I came up here. That's what I'm talking about, church folk. Why did that happen? Because sometimes the characteristics of the outside have a way of creeping on the inside and changing the very dynamic and the integrity and the characteristic of those on the inside. The language, the attitude, and even the integrity of what we once regarded in high esteem crept its way into the church, and instead of the folks on the inside correcting to the behaviors, we acclimated to the behaviors. We started acting like those on the outside. You remember when we used to have church clothes? Uh-huh. You didn't wear those church clothes during the week. Remember we had church shoes? You didn't play outside in church shoes. Instead of correcting behaviors and correcting ways we started acclimating them. Discipline became optional and respect became obsolete. Honor was missing and unity was nowhere to be found. Uh, right in the very doors of the church, the people started to fall away from one another instead of falling towards one another. The village was forsaken and the assembly of the saints was harder to coordinate. It got to the point where even the loyal members of the church became frustrated uh, with always being the ones to stick with the church. They were sitting now, they were sitting in the church and watching their fellow members eat brunch on Sunday mornings or just staying at home, been 
binge watching on Netflix. And I tell you something, even the most loyal person in the church can become frustrated and begin to act and think like the ones on the outside of the church. And God does not want us to think that way, but God wants us to love the church. During the pandemic, I was blessed to be able to work on the tech team for the First Episcopal District, what was later coined as the Dream Team. Many of you know this. But I'll be the first to admit that it did not start out as a dream team. In the beginning, there were a lot of people attracted uh, to serving on the team. But as the work began, we immediately saw people who weren't dreaming with everyone else. And so what started out as a large team eventually dwindled down to just about eight of us. The, tw the eight of us knew how to work together. And more importantly, we knew how to pick up someone's slack if somebody wasn't available because there was no spirit of jealousy or, or there was no need to want to sleep or step out on someone because we were on the same team. It was successful. The team was successful because just as Paul was telling the church of Corinth, we understood our assignment and we were going to work with God. And God, we know this because that the same God who blesses one person with the gift of video editing is the same God who blesses another person with the gift of social media, is the same God who blesses another person with the gift of running the Zoom, is the same God who blesses another person with the ability to create the run show, is the same God who blesses another person who knew how to compile all the videos to create one. When there is a one spirit, there is no competition amongst the team members because the goal will always be achieved. Today's passage of scripture reminds us that the Holy Spirit makes us to want to be on the same team. I say it again that we have gifts because of the Holy Spirit. And when we begin to lean on our own understanding and on our own strengths, we remove the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and do what the Holy Spirit needs to do. And we have to recognize that we have differences, but Paul reminds the church that even though we have differences, the differences still come from God. God never intended for all of us to have the same gifts. Think about it. The choir wouldn't sound the same if everybody was an alto. The choir wouldn't be the sound if everybody was a soprano. The choir wouldn't be the same if everybody were a tenor. God gave each and every one of us a different gift. And that's why some of us are better at being ushered than we are at being on the trustee board. Some of us are better at being on the choir than we are at being in the missionary society. Some of us are better at being in the missionary society than we are at greeting people at the door. Why? Because everybody doesn't have a greeting kind of spirit. We get tired after the first hello. We sure don't even want to hand out a bulletin after the second hello. We're ready to go to the restroom after the eighth hello. Everybody isn't meant to be on the greeting ministry, but it does not mean that there's no room for you in God's kingdom. I'm trying. I know a little about trying to find out different gifts that I had. I'll, I'll share with you a little later, but I remember growing up in the church before I even accepted my call to preach. I said, Lord, you're not asking me to preach, so I joined just about every choir I could, running from the word. I joined every choir. I had every choir robe in the church. I even tried to be the YPD director, the Christian ed director. I was doing everything except the call to ministry. God will sit you right where you're supposed to be the longer you keep running from him because he wants you in the right place. You have to understand one thing about Paul is that whatever he sees the body of believers, he sees the body of Christ. And whenever God looks at us, he sees the body of Christ uh, because Christ is the head of the church and he sees believers as the workers in the kingdom and he only brings up the necessity of unity and working together when he senses discord. So that's why days like Unity Day and I Love My Church Days are, are so important to us because it reminds us of why we do what we do. And this means that everybody belongs because each and every one of us has something to contribute. Every contribution, regardless of the size, is important to the body of believers and to the kingdom. Paul was attempting to compel believers about the power we have as a collective when we work in the spirit of unity 
unity instead of discord. And I believe that's what God is trying to tell the church today. Because I'm telling you, no sooner than when we walked through the doors of St. Luke, everyone was telling me about how this person left, but now they're coming back. Everyone was quick to tell me about where this person is and how they're coming back. I said, listen, y'all, even yesterday, another pastor told me that some of our members are sitting in their church. I said, well, if they're happy, don't compel them to leave because we don't want to mess up any discord that the Lord has for us because God has enough fish out in this sea to make us well go out there and get different people. God has enough spirit in each and every one of us so that if everything that we need, it can come back into the house of God. We have to be mindful that God always intended for us to be different but work together. The unity of believers itself is grounded in the fact that each of us is an indispensable part of the body. That means everybody belongs. Everybody has something to contribute. Every contribution, regardless of the size, is important to the body of believers, to the kingdom. And as we look at the conditions of our communities, we have to be willing to say, gone are the days when we have to wait for somebody to be a member of the church for two years before they can actively participate in the dream. Gone are the days when we have to wait until someone is read into full membership before we can say your gifts can be used. We have to be able to look at different gifts and find out where in the ministry can God use us because we don't know how far God has for us on this side of the kingdom but I do know that when all of God's children get together oh what a time we will have we have to realize that the church is not going to minister the same way it used to when you were little we have to realize that the outreach of the church is not the same as it was when you and I were growing up. But the same God who blessed the church when you were growing up is the same God who is blessing the church right now. The mission hasn't changed and the message hasn't changed, just the delivery. And if the delivery has changed, that means that we need new blood, we need new minds, we need new teammates, we need new people, we need new ideas. And when we get new teammates, we can't bring them into the old ideas, but we got to bring them in and listen to them and hear what they have to say. We need to embrace differences so that when we are hearing from God, we can then and take all of these gifts and work it out. How do I know what I'm talking about? Because God has already done it. He's already made sure that our ancestors that have gone before us, we can continue in their dream. He's already done it. And if you have ever been in doubt about whether or not something is going to work out, I need you to tell yourself something. If God did it once, he will do it again. If he brought you out of debt once, he will will do it again. If he healed you once, he will do it again. If he restored relationships once, he will do it again. If he did it for, is there anybody who knows that God already did it before and he will do it again? How do I know? Because right there in the fourth verse, there is a distribution of gifts. The word tells us that there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. So in other words, there is no need to be jealous of anyone. There's no need to be jealous because the same God who blessed me with preaching is the same God that blessed you with singing. You will ne I will never understand the need to be jealous of one another because that's not a gift that God has given to you. God is never in the gift of making you jealous of anyone else because God wants you to soar in what you already have. And so God is saying the same God that blessed the alto is going to bless the soprano, who blessed the soprano is going to bless the parking lot attendant, who blessed the parking lot attendant is going to bless the cook downstairs, who blessed the cook downstairs is going to bless the usher boy. God is the distributor of different gifts 
and we just have to learn how to work together so that God can get the glory. But God can't get the glory if I'm sitting on one side of the church and I'm jealous of the other side of the church. God can't get the glory if I'm sitting in the balcony, but I'm jealous of the people on the lower level. God can't get the glory if you're sitting in the pulpit and you're jealous of the pastor down the street. God can't get the glory if you're singing in the choir, but you're jealous of somebody in the pew. God can't get the glory because he distributes the gifts differently so that we can be blessed of one accord. And I know what I'm talking about because when I look at all the miracles in here, he didn't give out the same miracle from pew to pew, but he said, I got a healing on this side. I got deliverance on that side. I got a way maker on that side. I got to move some mountains on that side because God is not just one type of God. He's a God for all of us in different situations. He's a distributor of gifts. Isn't, and isn't that a blessed feeling and a blessed assurance that whatever I have, it can be used for the kingdom? We often think that what I have can't be used. I'm telling you, God can use just about everything, everything and anything. And God has a way of showing you exactly how he wants to use you. Not only will he distribute it, but he will make sure that you will have everything you have and need to complete it so that God will get the glory. So there is that distribution. But then secondly, our gifts are divided based on our strengths. Seventh verse, he says, somebody will have manifestation for the, give, for the common good. To the other, through the spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different tongues. And so forth and so on. Most of us at some point in our lives have experienced all of these differences. And you see it when you go to a boardroom or at work or maybe even at school. Where the person in position of leadership have put you in a position you did not necessarily want. You probably have even spoken to them after the fact and expressed to them that you feel like you have been misplaced and that you would rather work somewhere else. And what is the typical response from that leader? I see something in you that you don't see in yourself. And they probably encourage you to go back and think about that thing. I'm telling you right now, the thing you don't think can be used, God is telling you to go back because I see something in you that you don't see in yourself. You have not answered a calling in some area of your life because you are too worried about where you used to be, who you used to be, and where you used to do it. And God is trying to tell you that I still see something in you regardless of what you see in yourself. So if you have started that book, I need you to go ahead and finish it. If you are about to start that business, go ahead and open the LLC. If you know that you want to start a ministry, I just need you to get on your knees and pray about it and give it to God because he is going to make you strong in your strengths. God is not going to give you something that you cannot complete. And not only will he make sure you complete it, but he'll make sure that you'll be able to sit at the table in front of your enemies and let your enemies me see just how far God has brought you and so don't be afraid to be strong in front of your Lord don't be afraid to be strong in front of your enemies because God is not through with you yet now I'm gonna bring it back to the church and bring it back to the title in a second because I don't want you to I don't want anyone to think that it's going to be comfortable I'm not suggesting that you may even accept that calling right in the beginning. I'm not suggesting that you would even jump on board the moment you hear what God wants you to do. 
But I am imploring you and I am suggesting that you always give God a try before letting yourself down. <laughs> try God when you're weak and I promise you he'll show you where you're strong. Try God when you are doubting and I promise you God will show you the deliverance. He divides out his gifts and talents towards those who knows he who can handle the gifts. And so how, what does this mean for the church? We know that we are working for the same God because of how Paul concludes this letter we know he is the same God because finally there is deliverance for the team whenever the team experiences a victory you had to remember that the author, who the author of the victory belongs to God looks down on the team or rather the church of believers and recognizes the differences of our gifts and why because in the 11th verse he says all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each of one as he determines there is a reason why at the end of any football game especially if it is a championship game that the team participates in what is known as the Gatorade shower the Gatorade shower or sometimes when water is used is a symbolic recognition of that a win is about to occur the team feels empty and, and I'm proud of what they have put together and when they come and they can smell the victory they pour the Gatorade over the head coach as a way of saying thank you well I'm thankful today that everyone that we serve the same God but we don't have any Gatorade and God is not going to pour any of that on us but when we all come together as a church when we all come together as a body of believers he's not going to pour any water he's not going to pour down any Gatorade. He's just going to pour down blessings and pour down blessings and more blessings so that God can get the glory. And I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that knows that the gifts that you have from God, it's not just for you, but it's to give God the glory. You can't just have what you have and keep it to yourself because God can't pour any blessings on any selfish mind. But when you think of all that God has done, and how far he has brought the church 99 years someone said today that was not because of who you are but it's because of who God is and when I think of all that God has done I had no choice but to say I love my church I love the church that God built I love the church that God wants me to worship in and if you're here this morning you know how to lift your hands and tell God thank you that I have a place where I can worship. Thank you where I have a place where I can get baptized. Thank you that I have a place where I can get married. I love my church because I can bring my prayers to the altar. I can bring my whole self to the altar. I can bring myself and knowing that no one is going to judge me. I love my church not because it's perfect but because there are gifts in that church. And God if you would just work with me. God if you would just walk with me. Help me God to find out how you can use me and I believe the old people used to sing it like this I'm going to live so that God can use me I'm going to work so that God can use me I'm going to pray so that God can use me and as long as God is using you who cares what man has to say as long as God can use you who cares what people have to say because when I look back over my life and I think over some things I can say that it was God who was good it was God that gave us the gifts it was God that gave us a church it was God who gave us a home it was God who reminded us that though they slay me yet I will still praise the Lord I still praise him And so funny how many of us, and if you don't mind me just sharing this quick story, I shared it with a few of the, the board members a few weeks ago about what this thing called church hurt. <laughs> and how I opened it up talking about church folk. And I'm telling you, that phrase church hurt is a real thing. But so is church healing, so is church safety, so is church hope, 
so is church prayer. And so I shared with them that I should have stopped preaching a long time ago because of church hurt. I should have stopped a long time ago because of church hurt. I should have not been friends with a whole lot of people because of church hurt. I should have fussed out a whole lot of people because of church hurt, my God. I should have a whole lot of things because of church hurt. But then when I think about this passage in particular, that God gives you the strength when you are weak. And when I couldn't pray for myself, I made sure I surrounded myself with people who knew how to pray for me when I did not want to pray. There were times in my life where I had no evidence that God was right there. I couldn't trace him in my dreams. I couldn't find him when I was sleeping. I couldn't find him when I was at work but just when I was about to give up on God he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you and you can't sit down on your gift just because some person made you mad but the best thing that you can do is go back to the place that once hurt you and repurpose that pain for your purpose because when you repurpose your pain for your purpose God will get the glory and you can walk back in that same building and say, I love my church and I'm going to let God use me. If there's anybody here this morning that's still sitting in their pain, I want you to give it to God and let God work it out for you. I tell you, you won't even have to touch your enemy. God is already there. You won't have to talk nobody down. God is already there because when you love your church, that means you love God. And when you love God, you love his son, Jesus Christ. And when you love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's something on the inside that starts moving you. And it comes out on the outside. And you say, thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me. And that's why today, each and every one of us can be able to stand flat foot and I'll bring it back to my story when I think about all the times that I wanted to give up I'm so glad I did not give up I would not be standing here today if I gave it to the people and so whatever you gave up on pick it back up in the name of Jesus whatever you stop doing pick it up in the name of Jesus and bring it back into the church. Bring it back into the church. As we stand across the sanctuary. There is no point in wearing t-shirts if we don't believe in what God is doing for us. There is no point in having block parties if we don't love our church. There is no point of having community outreach if we don't love the in reach. There is no point of being a church if we don't look like God. And I don't just mean on Sunday. I'm talking about when you pumping your gas. I'm talking about when you were at the grocery store. I was in the hotel lobby, minding my own black business. Press number two on the elevator. Someone said, I know you. And I said, good morning. And she said, aren't you the pastor at St. Luke? This was weeks ago, y'all. I ain't had no t-shirt on. I didn't have no collar, no robe on. She said, somebody that goes to your church told me they had a new pastor. And she remembers me from a YouTube. You don't know the impact you are making. And you don't know who knows who you are connected to. It's like what our parents told us. You can act one way inside. But when you go outside, you better act like you belong to me. 
And that's what God wants us to do. What you do at home, that's at home. But when you go outside these doors, God says, you better act like you belong to me. You better say hi to people. You better be ready to feed the people. You better be able to talk to people. That's what the distributions of gifts are. It helps us to be ambassadors. It helps us to be witnesses beyond the walls of the church. I love my church. And I love my God. And it doesn't mean we're perfect. It means I'm going to worship with some imperfect people while we get right together with God. So after I open the invitation as Stephanie is making, Sister Stephanie is making her way to the uh, front here. Thank you, Sister Stephanie. Listen, there, I'm that kind of friend. If I know you got a gift, like the Lord says you got a gift, I'm going to call you up. Amen. <laughs> Sister Stephanie, they can play anything. Just tell them, right? But right now, we open the doors of the church for you to come first for salvation. You may know who Jesus is, but you need to have a saving relationship with him. You need to be able to say, I need you to cover me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. You know why that's important? Because when you walk to join a church, you need to know who Jesus is first. You come into the church, I promise you, somebody going to let you down. So when you have Jesus first, you can handle church membership, right? When you have Jesus first, you don't walk out on your church. When you have Jesus first, you will lean on his words and stick by those words. So if you need salvation, that's first, membership, that's second, or prayer. We are opening the doors to the church for you to say, I love my church. If you want to reunite yourself with St. Lou, I can't think of a better day than to do that today. Or if you want to join St. Luke for the first time, I can't think of a better day to do that than today. Whatever is on your heart, today is about loving God and loving God's church. Loving, the, I see you coming, I see you coming, God sees you coming. God is saying, welcome home, welcome back. God is saying, I've never forgotten you. God has not forgot if you are here today. Hallelujah. Now, family, only because I know I'm in New York, but if Tom Brady had thrown a football right now to, to, to Gronkowski, we would be cheering. Well, maybe not y'all, because y'all in New York. For those of us who are New England fans, we would know how to act if we saw a touchdown right now. And all of these individuals coming down for prayer, recommitment, rededication, coming down. The enemy is mad when people come back to the church. You know that, right? The enemy can't stand the reuniting and the assembling of the saints. He can't, he's so mad right now. Thank you for making the devil mad this morning. Thank you for getting him from underneath your foot and stomping him right back to the pit of hell where he belongs. Thank you right now. Thank you, God. So those who I see praying, I'm not going to interrupt your moment in prayer. As uh, Sister Stephanie, you begin to sing. I'm going to ask whatever the prayer request at this altar. Amen. Thy faithfulness, oh God, my Father, for there is no of turning with thee, for thou changest not thy compassion, they 
summer and winter, in the springtime and the harvest, the sun, the moon, and stars in their courses. Oh, God, to join with all nature. And I vote, and I vote witness to that great faithfulness your mercy. Tanika, anyone that knows what it feels like to lose a mother, I just want you to pray, my, pray for my sister. Pray that the Lord will strengthen her in these hours. Pray for her during this season. And Tanika, we are here for you. And we are not going to pretend to understand what you are going through. But we will mourn with you with hope. That the same God who sees these tears is the same God who will give you joy one morning. And we continue to lift up all these prayers, but we have eight young people, six young people going to the Dover experience tomorrow morning. And so as we lift up everything in prayer, we pray for our youth and traveling mercy. So let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for being God. Oh God, we thank you for being a comforter right now. We thank you, God, for being us a restorer of all grief, God. That you will help Sister Tanika to see you, God, in between the tears. And that you will remind her of her mother's legacy from this day forward. Oh, God, for those who have come to join this body called St. Luke, we thank you this morning.
For those, God, who have come to recommit themselves back into the church, God, we say thank you. For all of our representatives that will be traveling to Dover, Delaware tomorrow morning, God, we say thank you. Now, God, thank you for your word this morning that reminds us that each of us has a different gift and that, God, all of these gifts can be used for your glory. So pull us back together, God, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Oh, God, wherever we need to be restored and we need to be filled again, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you are hearing us, God, and that you are working with us, God, and that you are under helping us to understand things better by and by. Oh, God, great is your faithfulness. New mercies that we see every day. So, God, thank you for new mercies. Thank you, God, right now for your on time, all powerful, and omnipresence. We thank you, God. Now, God, help us to remember the power that's within us, that as we stand up from this altar, that the power that's within us comes from you. So we stand in confidence, God, knowing that you are always the author and the finisher of our faith. All of God's children said amen, amen, amen and amen. Rise, my father's children. And for those who are recommitting or joining, I'm going to ask that you would follow the Sister Asia. Sister Asia is going to raise her hand. She's right behind us over here in the white. If you are recommitting or joining St. Luke this morning, we ask that you will see Sister Asia over here on this side. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. come to church with so many things on our hearts and we want to leave with something else. I'm going to call up our chair people, our chair team from the I Love St. Luke Day, Sister Kendra and Sister Shaquan. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Oh, yes, it's for real. Church, I want to say thank you. Well, first of all, will my committee please stand for those of you who are here? Thank you, team, for the many calls, the meetings, the last minute things. And even when you don't always hear thank you, and we sometimes get more complaints than a thank you. Just thank you for just weathering the storm with me. I appreciate you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. 
to my church family, to visitors, to everyone who contributed to the success of this weekend. Sister Zippo, if you could come forward. We're so grateful that this year we had 10 paid vendors for the block party. So today the committee wants to turn over $1,025 from the paid vendors from the block party. This work is not easy. And we do it for free because we really love our church. And our yes to God is for real. So the next time you complain about giving $1, $2, remember that when you spend that $2,000 in names for Gucci and Louis Vuitton, those names that can't do nothing for you, but when you invest it into your church, into your God, God will turn it around and multiply it. Reevaluate your priorities. Love your church and know that your yes needs to be for real. Amen. Amen. And, and what, what we have forgotten is that Sister Shaquan just gave birth to her baby daughter. Just three weeks? Just three weeks ago. And as soon as she was able to find her phone, I think 24 hours after she delivered, she's texting me about the I Love St. Luke Day. And I immediately said, who's your coach here? I don't want to hear from you anymore. I, I don't want to hear from you anymore. She, I'm fine. No, you are, you are a new mommy. So no. But she, she was working, y'all, even from her bed. And Sister Kendra, you just popped in. And you really, I did not feel any difference while I wasn't talking to her. <laughs> she was texting, I was ignoring her. She was emailing, I was ignoring her. She finally said, Pastor, I'm okay. I said, okay, it's been about two weeks. Maybe I can talk to you now. But seriously, thank you, Sister Kendra and the whole committee. Thank you, Sister Rhonda and the choir, the ushers, the music department for everything that you all did to make this a complete success. And thank you all for bearing with us a little longer today as we honored um, everyone. There are some other clergy in the house that I want to make sure that I honor. Uh, Reverend Howard is all the way from South Carolina as well. Stand up, Reverend Howard. Is that Columbia, South Carolina? Columbia, South Carolina. All right. I, I, don't, I don't mean no shade to the other churches, but uh, to the other states, but um, South Carolina seems to be this church's. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I believe y'all know Reverend Edna Parker. You are always at home and always welcome to walk through these doors of the church. Amen. Amen. Immediately following the worship experience, I am not going to walk out because it is your tradition to take a picture um, of everyone together here in the pulpit. So, um, Brother Minor, are you ready? Oh, he's already in position. So when at the, at the conclusion of the doxology, we are just going to receive instructions so that we can come up and take a picture. And then for my family and friends that um, have come up from Connecticut um, to be with us today in South Carolina, amen, to be with us today, I ask that you would stay as well so I can get a group picture with you. Amen. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us join hands.
us faultless before his throne with all power in his hands and who reminds us that he gives us the gifts to use in our church with all power in his hands now henceforth and forevermore together the people of God said amen So visitors, that means you are a part of the picture as well. Amen.